Hello everyone! In today's video I will share my entire Easter dinner recipe with you. The dinner consisted of Mediterranean leg of lamb, saffron rice with creamy mint and yogurt sauce, crunchy green salad and pita bread. I will start with the recipe for the rub, then we're going to cook the rice, then we're going to make the creamy yogurt and mint sauce, the salad and the pita bread. For the wrap, I'm gonna start with two sticks of room temperature butter. It is very soft and it should be. This is the softness of the butter, so we can spread it over the leg of lamb. So the first thing I'm going to add, it's one tablespoon of ground common. Spread that. Next, I'm adding two teaspoons of ground coriander. There we have one. And the second one. I'm also adding one very generous tablespoon of dried mint and one and a half teaspoons of salt and I'm using Himalayan salt. That's gotta be about a half here. And lastly, I'm adding about five or six, fi not finely, but just minced, sort of kind of minced garlic, garlic cloves. All right, and then we will mix everything very well together. It is important, I actually took the butter out last night, so it's really a room temperature. So it's easier, much easier to work with it because we don't want the butter to be completely melted and I'll show you here in a second why. Make sure to mix all the ingredients very well together. And then we're gonna use this to spread over the, the red of lamp. And we're doing this about an hour prior to putting the leg of lamb in the, in the oven. Alright, this is done. Looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna bring the leg of lamb now. So place the, the leg of lamb in the pan that it's deep enough to hold the juices. It's probably a good idea to be a little bit deeper than this one, but also place it in a wrap. And now you're going to need a sharp knife and just very lightly score the lamb, very, very lightly, just as such. All right, this one needs to be a little bit deeper than this one, just enough to cut through the fat and just a little bit into the meat. All right, this one is good, and now we'll do this direction as well. Okay, and now we're going to spread the wrap it very nicely everywhere. Try to put some in the crevices that we just sliced. So normally in other videos, my previous Easter videos that you might have seen, I am not adding any wrap, but this is a boneless leg of, ram, uh, a leg of lamb and it doesn't have the usual thick fat on the top. Normally the lamb comes with a lot more fat. This one, not so much, so I had to combine quite a few recipes and then add some of my own ingredients that weren't in those recipes that for example mint I love dried mint and lamb but I don't like rosemary and I don't like cinnamon and what was the other one ginger I don't like that on my lamb either so I took a few recipes left what I like removed what I don't like and then added the stuff that I like so I'm just going to keep working and spreading it evenly, although that's, that's pretty good. And now that it's all spread, I'm going to let it sit in the refrigerator for about half an hour, just so the butter gets hard again over the, over the lamb. And I'll be right back. I am now just about at the end of the half an hour that I'm leaving the leg of lamb in the refrigerator, so I'm going to start with the rice. And I'm gonna rinse it really, really well. The better you rinse the rice, the more fluffier it will be. I rinsed it the best I can for about a minute or so, and now I'm le gonna let it sit in cold water. And I'm gonna add some more water to the bowl. All right, that's perfect. And now I'm gonna let it sit here for 30 minutes. And I'm just about to take the leg of lamb out of the refrigerator and start baking it so I am going to preheat the oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit 
There you go. And because I wanna, let me see here. I wanna, I wanna cook it in a bottom rack. So I am going to, oopsie. I am going to take this one out. And before I put the leg of lamp in the oven, I'm going to add just a few bay leaves to flavor the juices that are gonna come out because later we will be using those juices. And now we are going into the oven. Well, not us. Like a All right, the oven is nice and warm, and I am going to put the little one right in the middle. I am going to set the timer to one hour and 50 minutes. But keep in mind, that's not the entire time that we're going to. We're gonna add more time later. So as of right now, we're going to do one hour, one hour and 50 minutes, and then we're going to add the rice and cook it some more. There you go. And now we wait. It's been about half an hour since I put the leg of lamp in the oven. And while that's cooking, I'm gonna start prepping the rice. And we're gonna start by melting one stick of butter. I, by the way, have the burner on medium heat. And next, I'm going to add one whole chopped yellow onion. And as always, be very careful because gonna splatter hot oil so make sure to have the burner on medium even a little bit below medium add the onion the next thing we're going to add is one teaspoon of himalayan salt my favorite salt and then i'm just gonna take a pinch a small pinch of black pepper and then this herb cardamom it's a very very strong herb so just take just about that much and up to the onions and then just saute for about a minute or until the onions are translucent just keep, keep stirring it the whole time the whole one minute now i'm gonna add the drained rice it's up for 30 minutes in water and then mix it well just for about 30 seconds just let the rice be just with the onions that's two cups of rice, all right? And now I'm gonna add three cups of water. Normally you would add chicken stock to this. However, I just opened the chi chicken stock I got from Walmart and it was already open. Somebody even pushed with a finger the little foil cover. So using water. So you're going to need three cups of water or chicken stock. And if you're using chicken stock, um, Make sure not to add salt because the chicken stock is already salty. If you bought a salty one, so you don't have to add salt. But I'm gonna mix it all really well. And if you're the person who opened my chicken stock at Walmart, shame on you. It's Easter, so I can't go buy another one. Anyway, okay. Now that it's all mixed well, I am going to just place two bay leaves in here and I'm going to add just a small pinch of saffron and I'm gonna be very careful because that is very expensive. <laughs> That's all the saffron I'm gonna add. This is the first time I'm cooking with saffron so I'm, uh, I'm cautious with it. Oops. Maybe just a little more. All right, and I'm gonna cover it and simmer it for 20 minutes on medium. The rice has now cooked for 20 minutes. And I'm gonna turn it off, set it aside. And the next step we're gonna do, we well, still have another oh, 30 minutes left on that meat. So now I'm gonna put the rice aside, I'll cover it after I mix it well, <clears throat> I'll set it aside and we're gonna start working on the sauce that we're going to serve our dish with. Cover it and set it aside. Now that we're done with the rice and we're just waiting on the meat to finish cooking, we're gonna work on the sauce and this is the serving sauce for when everything is done to garnish the dish with. And I'm gonna start with one cup of yogurt. You're going to need two, but we're starting with one. Actually, first, I'm going to add 
the mint. Over here I have just about a handful of dried, of uh, fresh mint, I'm sorry. Alright, the next thing I'm adding is the garlic. I have three cloves of garlic here. Next we're gonna add a pinch of salt. And you don't have to, I just like everything quite salty. And finally I'm going to add the one cup of yogurt. And this is Greek yogurt, just regular Greek yogurt, plain, full fat, unflavored. Alright, and next I'm gonna mix everything together. And this is what the mixture looks like. And I, now I'm gonna add it to another cup of yogurt and mix it with it. And mix it well together so we can thicken the sauce a little bit. Because in the blender, the yogurt becomes quite liquidish. This way, we're gonna make it thick again. Don't, don't mix it too crazy so it doesn't get all liquidy again. But just as such, I'm gonna cover it with saran wrap and put it in the refrigerator until I'm ready to actually serve dinner. Right? And it will thicken even more while sitting in the refrigerator. All right, the one hour and 50 minutes are over. Ta-da! Make sure not to turn the oven off. Keep, keep the oven on. Now I'm gonna get back to the rice. In the pan where we're gonna finish the cooking, I'm gonna add the cooked rice. Spread the rice evenly in the pan. And you don't have to take the, the bay leaves out, just leave them there. You can just remove them once you start serving the rice. But you see how nice and fluffy it is? And this rice is enough for eight servings. So with a little bit of luck, we may have some leftovers for tomorrow, but I'm not counting on that. And now I'm going to transfer the leg of lamb over the rice. Okay, I will put it over the rice. Make sure not to turn the oven off. Keep it at 325 degrees. And now I'm gonna spread some of these wonderful juices that are in the bottom of the pan where I bake the, the leg of lamb. I'm gonna spread it over. And then I'm gonna spread some over the rice as well. Remember all the, um, the wrap that we did with all the spices. We wanna transfer that into the rice and the meat. We don't want it to, to go to waste. Oh, how wonderful. Can you smell it back there? <laughs> he gave me the thumbs up. Alright, the pen is not as hot anymore. I'll just grab the pen and pour the rest of the juices or the drippings over the rice and the meat. Okay, we're good. Now for this last step, you're actually gonna have to cover it either with a lid or aluminum foil. And I have a lid. All right, found the lid and make sure if your lid, uh, if you're not using a foil but your own lid, if it has an opening like this, make sure that it's closed. And now I'm gonna put it in the oven for another 30 minutes. And after the 30 minutes covered are over, you're gonna have to, have to uncover the lamb and cook it uncovered, just as such, for another 30 minutes to reach the desired temperature. And for the spring green salad, you will need two heads of crunchy lettuce, three cucumbers, four or five scallions, four or five radishes, a small bunch of dill, olive oil, and vinegar. And for the salad, just chop the lettuce any way you like it. I happen to like it kind of sort of finely chopped. Next up, the chopped cucumber. Chop it any way you like it. And finally, the chopped dill, radishes and scallions. Add everything together carefully. My bowl is a little too small, but I don't have a bigger one. So that will have to do. All right, we have it all. And now I'm gonna sprinkle olive oil. This is probably good, two tablespoons of olive oil. It's a big salad then a generous pinch of Himalayan salt, even two, and then some balsamic vinegar. This is the one I use, the one I have currently, so I'm using this one. I'm just gonna cover the 
opening with my fingers and start sprinkling over the salad and make the salad just before you serve dinner and mix it very nicely together and this is a very traditional Bulgarian spring salad these are all things that you get in mid-spring when you start gardening these are some of the first things to come out I don't know about the cucumbers maybe if they're in hot houses but this is the best salad that goes with one it's absolutely fresh and crunchy and everybody in Bulgaria makes this salad I think I hope they still make it they make it in Bulgaria we make it with regular vinegar just apple cider regular apple cider vinegar but here in America I discovered the balsamic vinegar and I absolutely love it and you just mix it all together and then dish up for everybody it's easier this way to make the whole thing make sure to mix it well so all the salt and the vinegar and the oil uh, cover everything evenly but for lamb that is your to-go salad all right guys it's done look at that beauty I took the thermometer out it is at 150 degrees and it's gonna continue to cook for a little bit for medium so at this point I'm gonna cover it again and let it sit until I'm, done, I'm ready to serve and the last step of the process the last thing that we need for serving the food and the guests are here is to prepare the pita bread so I don't know how to make pita bread I'm not a baker and what I'm going to do is just I bought this one from Sprouts and I'm gonna slice it into quarters just as such all right like that so all you have to do or what I'm doing it's arranging the pita bread in a baking tray so I can toast it for a little bit and then sprinkle with olive oil and add some garlic salt and when you're ready to serve Cut a slice of lamb for everyone, put it in a bed of rice and also dish up the sauce in a small bowl so everyone can add it as they wish. I hope you enjoyed this video and if so, please give it a thumbs up and if this is your first time visiting my channel, please consider subscribing. As always, thank you so much for watching. I love you all. Goodbye.